Escape the Seeker. That's book two of the Rag and Bone series. Coming up next right here on The Right Stuff. Hi, and welcome to The Right Stuff. I'm the queen, Parker J. Thank you so much for joining me. Today, we're going to be talking to my returning guest co-host and contributor today, Jeff Ayers. You may remember him when we talked about his debut novel, Skate the Thief. And now we're back for book two of this wonderful series, the Rag and Bone series. I can't wait to dig into it in just a few moments. As always, I want to thank you for your support. We have been showcasing Christian authors worldwide for the past 10 years. As God gives us grace, we'll continue to do so. To find out how you can help out, simply go to patreon.com slash write stuff and see what you can do. And as always, we covet your prayers. To stay up to date with PJC Media, simply go to pjcmedia.net. Click that pink follow button. You'll never miss a show. Subscribe to our YouTube channel for updates, uploads, and more. Go ahead, subscribe today. And so, without further ado, I'm going to bring Jeff on board. Jeff, how you doing? I'm doing great. Thanks for having me. It's so wonderful to have you, too. It's been, I think, a year or so since the last time you've been on. And at that time, you had just released your debut novel. And now you have book two out there. How does it feel? I'm really glad that it's out uh, and that I don't have to work on it anymore. <laughs> I know exactly what you mean. It's like this book took the life out of me, even though I enjoyed my life being taken out of me. But now it's done on to the next project. Wouldn't you say that's more or less accurate? <laughs> There's always another one around the corner. Absolutely. Yep. And speaking of another one around the corner, there will be a third. Um, currently working on that. Uh, we'll see how soon we can get it out. I don't like to, you know, give myself any kind of deadlines like that, but um, I may have it in the publisher's hands by summer, maybe, possibly. Do you think this will be the last one or will you have more? No, this is, I, I've planned on this one being a, a four book series. So we've got book one and two out and then uh, book three and four uh, are the next two that I have planned. What has this whole journey taught you since your first debut novel to right now? Um, sequels are harder uh, for me, um, especially when it comes to the the drafting process, you know, the actual getting the story down and out um, because there's less freedom when you're doing that. Um, when you're when you're starting from scratch, you can always immediately write your way out of any roadblocks that come up in the the story. Um, you can invent places. You can uh, create any sort of tool or magic or creature or whatever you need um, that can help the story move forward. But with a sequel, um, it's harder uh, because you've already got the world established. You've already got rules in place. There's things that people can and can't do. There's places that exist and don't exist. Um, so that was an unexpected challenge for me. Um, I didn't anticipate that going forward. I like what you said about writing a sequel because writing a sequel is very difficult. Like you mentioned, you already have the world established. You already have certain behaviors ingrained into the characters, all of that good stuff. When you look back, though, and you have these world building rules already canon, how do you make sure that you don't go past what you've already created? By the end of book one, I, I knew what I wanted the world of skate to look like and I knew that there were certain things that could happen certain things that couldn't um, but even within those boundaries I found that that was actually kind of a fun creative space for me to be in um, because it being freely creative with whatever you want to do that's fun but it's also fun to be like okay can you also can you challenge yourself to do it with some limits in place, right? With some restrictions, with some uh, boundaries to work with. Um, and with that, I think I was able to make uh, a better story 
with book two, um, partially because once those sort of things are already concrete and established and, you know, for lack of a better word, real for me, I don't have to um, worry about that stuff anymore because it's, it's like trying to worry about gravity in the real world. It's it's just there. You don't have to think about it. Um, and so it, it was more difficult at first, but once I got into um, the, the headspace of this is just the way the world is, uh, that I've made, it was, it was, it was better. Now, people who have read your first book are just raving about the second book. And when you get those type of reviews and remarks, how does that make you feel? It's, it's, it, I'm always stunned that anybody's reading them in the first place. <laughs> that's, that's just genuinely surprising and confusing every time that I think of it. I can't believe that people are actually reading something that I wrote. Um, and then to have them tell me that it was good and that they enjoyed it. And uh, I've had people tell me that they thought this one was better than the first one. Like that's, that's really encouraging. Um, and I, I just want to tell anybody who's listening here if you know someone who has written something and you like it please tell them that um because it's it's such a nerve-wracking thing to put this amount of time and effort into something and to put it out there for the judgment of the general population um any any positive feedback um, that's that's meant, that's genuine, um, can really do wonders for somebody in any creative field. But uh, I can only speak for writing, of course. I think writers are the most sensitive of the creatives because it's such a part of us. These characters have lived in our heads. They speak to us. They're like our children. And then we release them into the world and then they're up for public consumption. They're up for public critique. And now we have to listen to what you're going to say about my child. It's difficult. So if you do like a book, I agree with Jeff, please let the author know. Even if it's an author, and this is my personal opinion, some authors are better at not being as swayed by personal remarks or reviews. I'm not one of them. But even if you're like a J.K. Rowling or a Stephen King, I think people still want to hear, I loved your book. Of course. Of course. And and like you, like you said, I think all creatives are that way. But I don't know. Maybe there is something uh, special about uh, people who decide to put words on paper. Uh, maybe we're extra weird. I think, too, with music lyricists, because, again, it's the words that you put on there. So that's why I think writers do have that extra sensitivity, even though we'll act like we don't, because we could put on a facade. But that's why we want the book to speak for us, why most authors hate marketing. They like writing, but hate marketing. <laughs> yeah, that's that, that was something I was not prepared to do at all. <laughs> I wrote the book, Let the Book Sell Itself. And I always encourage authors, you do have to market your work regardless if you don't want to. Right. Because you want people to know about your book. And one guy, he put it to me very plainly. He said, we know who McDonald's is. Right. They've been around for years. However, they don't stop marketing because they don't ever want you to forget that they exist. And you say, there's no way possible. How do we know? Because they don't stop marketing. Every so often they get a new burger, a new fry, you know, a new discounted thing. So totally feel you on that, Jeff. Yeah. Now, we've been telling people about your experience from being a debut author to now having your second book out. You worked on a third and fourth book. And I did that deliberately because this show is always about encouraging authors. And I want that author out there to hear what it's like when you do the thing that God told you to do, which is write your book. Now, let's go ahead and delve into the world of Skate. Now, we first met Skate in your books, Skate the Thief. Now we're going to be talking about Skate the Seeker. So her whole world has changed. How has it changed from book one to book two? 
And if you have to give away a little bit of spoilers, that's okay, but not too many. <laughs> right. I'll 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 try to avoid too many specifics that might be uh, spoiling a book one. Um, but yeah, by the time we get to book two, um, she's made that critical choice um, that she's struggling with throughout the entire first book. By the end of the first book, she's made that choice um, with the consequence being that she has more freedom now, but also she's lost something as uh, someone very important to her. And she's trying to get this person back. Um, and so she's, she's out looking and it's, it's a story about, uh, finding and, and searching and, uh, exploring and running, uh, because it's, it's not just that she's out looking for something, it's that she's being chased while she's out looking for something. Um, and so it, it's, it's a, it's a different book in a lot of ways, um, and Skate is becoming a, a different person in a lot of ways. Um, she She's not having to rely as much on her ability to, to take things, her, her ability to, to sneak around. It's not as necessary for her in a more, I, anymore. She's, she's stepped into a, a different kind of world. Uh, and in a way that's literal because... In book one, her entire world was the city that she lived in, and now we're going across an entire um, kingdom, right? We've, we've got uh, d d villages and uh, capital cities and um, mountain ranges and, and deserts. She's, she's opening up a new world because of the choice that she makes um, in book one. I like that you give Skate an opportunity to grow past the confines of her life that she lived, and now she's exploring new things. I think that is a great message to send to young readers if they're reading to not be afraid to explore beyond your world. Why do you think more books should explore that? I think nowadays people are taught to stay in your lane. There's a movement in my opinion to keep people complacent and not take risk because if you take risk you may end up in a lane that's not originally yours whatever that means however if we don't take risk we don't explore our potential and for skate she's moving outward into the world learning new things not just about her world but about herself right and that's that's just the power of books in general and the fiction in particular is it 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 teaches us to inhabit the headspace of someone else um it teaches us to see the world even if it's through the lens of a completely fictional place with completely fictional play uh, people and um you know different rules right like magic exists here there's uh there's mystical creatures right even if it's through that lens, it's teaching us to think differently about the world. And all books do that. Fiction especially does that. Um, and it's it's one of the most powerful things that we have, as human beings have done, is that we tell stories. Um, and these stories can have a bunch of different uses. They can teach us to remember things. They can teach us to learn things. They can teach us to... Uh, be curious about everything around us. And if we lose that, um, it's just like you said, we, we fall into this complacency. We fall into this uh, rigid way of thinking about things in only a certain way. That doesn't mean that we always have to be swayed by whatever we read at any given moment. Uh, it doesn't mean that our principles automatically change. But it does mean that we have to be curious. We have to be thinking about the world around us. Because when we close ourselves off, um, that does damage to us. It does damage to our communities. It does damage to our neighborhoods. Um, we do damage to each other when we do that. And so Skate is a, a naturally curious person um, because most people before life happens to them, 
they are curious. We're all born that way. We are all born with a sense of wanting to explore. Um, and books help us do that. I'm so glad you mentioned about what fiction does to help us get into someone else's headspace, even if they are fictional characters, because the human experience is not fictional. And with fiction, you can do a lot of things that you can't do with nonfiction. Nonfiction is always about sharing a message or giving you direction or helping you along with some thing. But fiction is all about exploration. It's all about adventure. And the ink welder, welder who inks his, um, the ink welder has to write those words beautifully in order for us to enjoy it. But I think, especially within Christian circles, there's this weird aversion to fiction, particularly if you have fantasy fiction, because everyone thinks of fantasy fiction as witchcraft. And you're like, but it's not. <laughs> not every fantasy has witches in it, you know? Yeah, even if we, like, even if your story does have that word, witches, like, that's what they're called in, in my world, witches and wizards, like. Yeah, but you don't lose sleep over it. Like, I wouldn't lose sleep over it. I didn't lose sleep over it the first time, you know? So it's not. Right. Like... No, no. <laughs> but people, uh, I remember, and I've talked about it before. I don't want to delve into it. I just use the word magic on a post when I was sharing one fellow author's book for this show and people just lost it. They absolutely lost it. They said, well, you're promoting witchcraft. And I remember telling the people who were complaining that if you feel this way, you can contact the author and ask her what her beliefs are. Right. And no one did it. Yeah. No one did it. And then I was called a witch. Yeah. And then I was personally attacked, even though they don't know me. Right. All I used was the word. And it was interesting because the author had actually gone to her pastor and talked about this element in her story. So she wanted to present magic in a certain way that did not have a spiritual connotation with it. Right. Right. She was going to present it like I think it was in um, stones or rocks or something that's not coming from the person. You know what I mean? If I'm going to get real detailed into this, but fantasy authors who are Christians pick up on this type of talk and everything. And some don't, if you do have witches, don't, don't lose your mind. That's the thing. Right. But this is really something that happens in Christian circles, but I'll bring it back to, to the book here, but I, I'm sorry. I went off a <laughs> tangent there, but it's just something I'm very passionate about is, you right. know, a real big about creators of writing what they want to write because it's not fair for anyone to stifle that creativity. Right. It's not, not, um, do I have to like everything someone creates? No, no, no. But you don't stifle that creativity. So no, we, we can all. have our taste. There's nothing wrong with that. Oh, it's wonderful. Wonderful. And so my question is this. So as you're writing book three now, do you still feel that same pressure for writing books one and two? And now you're like, oh gosh, I got to keep this going for four books. Why did I do this? You know, what is the fun thing you read there? Yeah, that happened with book two quite a bit. And of course that also happened because book two, I was working on it through the, the depths of COVID, right? Like uh, book one, uh, it, it, it hit shelves in 2020, the summer of 2020. Um, and so I tried to write a book during that and it was just, it was impossible to get any work done. Um, because the, the world was falling apart. Um, but, uh, while I did have the thought several times of, why did I do this? Why, why didn't I just write a new book? Um, that, that happens at least once a month. Um, it's, <laughs> it's, it, it's not something that I regret at all. Um, I love these books. Um, I love these characters. I'm, I'm happy to continue writing them. Um, I don't think I'll do more than four. Uh, like from the outset, I had it set down in my head as like a four book uh, series. Um, but uh, who knows? We may do the the um, the, the Sherlock Holmes thing and say, well, if you're going to make me do it, I'll do another one. But um, four, four was always my plan with, with this one. I'm glad you used that example with Sherlock Holmes because uh, Sir 
Arthur Conan Doyle was sick of Sherlock Holmes. When he killed them off, people were like, bring him back. I don't care if you bring him back. <laughs> yeah, you, you, you cannot do this. It was as if he had actually committed a murder. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I w what writer wouldn't want to have that sort of reaction to their characters, even though it may drive them crazy? I know there's one uh, big wig author. Her name is Janet Oki. She writes prairie romances and mm -hmm. prairie books. And the couple that got her to start them was named Marty and Clark. And Marty and Clark have been around for a long time because she's been writing since the 80s. Janet Oki has. She writes since the 80s. And, right. uh <laughs> Um, she said, readers have begged me not to kill off Marty and Clark, <laughs> right? <laughs> and so Marty and Clark are in the books. They're 90 years old, <laughs> now, right? And uh, I think Clark, uh, Clark got his, the, the character Clark got his leg cut off, so he has a wooden leg. And Marty is with her grandkids. And there's one point where Clark says, can't wait to get to heaven. No wooden legs there, you know? <laughs> right? yeah. And Marty's yeah. like, I'm looking forward to going to glory, which is kind of like, <laughs> In my opinion, the author telling the reader, can they go? I, w I would like them to go now. Can we let them go? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah. but again, people love that character so much they want it to happen. So I would love to have that happen for you. I would love Skate to be a fixture for a young person's mind or even an old person's mind for that matter and just become a fixture that they have to have more of this world. But well, it's right. like you said, I don't know if you want that because you may say, oh, I want that. They're like, why did I ask <laughs> for yeah. that? Yeah. Yeah. This the, the maybe I should have asked for something else. Yeah. But so real well, quickly, you know, has your writing process changed from book one to book two, now to book three? Do you still pretty much do the same thing you have been doing? Do you see any changes in your routine? Tell us about that. Um, not really. Uh, it's it's still uh, a lot of a lot of late nights uh, when I have uh, time to myself. Um, that's when I feel most creative anyway. Um. Although I do find myself uh, falling asleep at the keyboard more easily now uh, <laughs> than I used to, uh, which is annoying because I'll start a sentence and know exactly what I mean to say. And then I look at the screen and I've written nonsense and I've got to go back and rewrite the same sentence about five or six times. Um, but what, once that happens, probably three times in a night I have to pack it in um what one once once your head hits the keyboard a third time that's that's bedtime it's a sign <laughs> the body yeah. is saying we're going to go to sleep but you can stay up that's what the body is <laughs> now I know you want to keep doing this but you're shutting down I you love know? it I love it so Jeff if people want to get in contact with you where can they find you online they can find me on um, Facebook. Uh, Inky Pages is my my Facebook page. I'm usually there posting some nonsense. Um, and then I am also on Threads. Uh, you can find me on Threads where, again, whatever insane thought pops into my head is usually what I post. I don't spell check on Threads. So you're getting the, the raw, unedited stuff if you, if you follow me on Threads. Uh, on threads jeff Ayers, uh author i think is my username on there uh, and then i've got my website which is um jeff Ayers author dot weebly dot com or just jeff Ayers writes dot com should also get you there um and if you're wanting to keep up with uh what's going on with me i'm posting updates there fairly regularly um uh, and i love talking to people um, either in person or online about my books and, and stories. Um, I did a, a, a book signing event just, uh, yesterday and I had a young reader who was interested in my book and they wanted to know about the publishing process. Like, how does that work? And I, uh, I explained, you know, there's self-published and there's traditionally published. And, uh, she said, oh, what'd she say? She said, I think I do self-publish because then I get to be in charge of all of it. I said, that's, that's true. You do, you, you get to decide the cover. Um, she says, but I'm not very good at drawing. So I don't know what I do about the cover problems. I love it. Yeah. Love that's, it. that's, that's something you got to think of. I said, write the book first and then, and then you could do <laughs> you could out the rest of it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love working with young authors. We had a young author on the show recently. Her name was Dakota Hawk. 
and she wrote her first book when she was 15. I interviewed her when she turned 16. Very nice. And, oh, yeah. It was a fantasy, uh, animal fantasy that she wrote. And as I was reading her book, Jeff, I said, how come I didn't write like this when I was 16? <laughs> yeah, I can even imagine. That's amazing. Uh, and it was so good. I was. I felt like I was reading someone who had been doing this for some time. And she said she's always been writing and because um, she's homeschooled and her mom and dad helped her uh, with, with, with everything. So now she's writing. Right. She's had a second book coming out and she'll let me know when she's ready. You know, <laughs> I'm like, it's so stupid at 16. That's so, that's, that's incredible. Um, I was having a conversation with somebody online who they were worried that they were never going to be an author. And at some point they mentioned that they were 16 years old. Like they've already written a book and they're like, I don't know if I'm ever going to get published. And I was, I was just dumbfounded. Like, guy, you're, you, you're, do you not understand what you've done? You're already miles ahead and you're worried about not not being on track that's that's just amazing i i didn't have the the wherewithal i didn't have the 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 fortitude to write an entire book when i was 16 years old i didn't have the focus i couldn't yeah, i couldn't look jealous a little bit like how did they get it together and i didn't get together so i'm x number of years yeah old, you know? i didn't get anything published until i was 30 <laughs> I hear you completely. I hear you exactly what you're saying. So to you, dear listener out there, if you're 16 years old and you've already written a book, first of all, congratulations. The hard part is done. Well done. And, and I'm thinking, I usually have you end the show with inspiring words, but you've done that throughout the entire interview because people are learning about you, about your writing process, your books, where your books say. So I really don't think you have to cap it off with anything else, but, you know, just to keep going. But if you do have something to share, go ahead and share it. Um, no, just w uh, what I've already said. And if, if you've got a story to tell, sit down and write it. Um, cause if, if, if you've got a story in you or several, the world will be better for having it. Uh, whether it sells a lot, whether anybody wants to publish it, that doesn't matter. Um, if you've, if you've got a story to tell, tell it, um, that's what we're here to do with like, we have this creative impulse. We have this creative spark. Um, don't, don't withhold it. Use it. Jeff, thank you again for being with me on the show today. I cannot wait to have you back and have you back soon. Thank you so much. And we were talking today to Jeff Ayers. He is the author of the book, Skate the Seeker, which is book two of the Rag and Bone series available on amazon.com or wherever books are sold we want to thank inkling books thankling books for connecting us today for the show they are his publisher and they're just really good at creating really good books i've had a couple of their authors on uh since they came into business about two to three years ago now so i'm really thankful for the connection to you dear listener if god has given you the gift to write what did Jeff say? Go ahead and write it. Don't wait. It's in you. Get that story out. So what are you doing? Go ahead, pick up the pen and write stuff. Thank you so much for joining me for this edition of The Right Stuff. I'm the Queen Parker J. And you have a wonderful, absolutely glorious, blessed day. <laughs>